greetings and salutations to all. Um, God, you know now I can't even count how many times I've actually done this dang thing. Uh, whoo! But I'm redoing it this time for the simple fact that I had read a comment left by Casey Jones, uh, Chris to be exact, and he had mentioned something about me doing a, a bigger background. So, with that, I decided, well, you know what, I'll pull out a few more, because honestly, my background wasn't that big, because I usually end up talking about the movies in it, but um, since it does deal with space, I decided to go a little bit bigger. Now, it's not the biggest background I've ever done, because I've actually done one freaking huge. It almost took up a large portion of my floor, but uh, that was for the 30 Days of Horror um, was a challenge. And I decided to end that uh, end that one with a big background. But you know, back up. This background is for space, and it goes out to Casey Jones. Um, there you go, man. I hope that's big enough for you. I'll quickly show what I have going on. We have Lost in Space up there. Uh, Last Starfighter, Fortress, Outland. Dante 01, which is really interesting. Uh, Moon 44. Sorry about the glare from the window. I probably should have closed that blind. Um, Mission to Mars. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like that one, but you know what? I did. It was kind of cool. Um, plus, you know, I like science fiction also. But uh, Event Horizon. Uh, Galaxy Quest. Uh, Alien Uprising, which is a total shit low-budget B-movie um, done by Maverick Studios, uh, kind of like, uh, I'd say it was akin to The Asylum. Um, they also did Humanity's End. Now, I will say I enjoyed Humanity's End a lot more because it was had a lot more humor and stuff like that, but still saying shit uh, special effects. <laughs> Apollo 18, I know a lot of people shit on that one, didn't like it. I enjoyed it, really. Um, I sometimes... I like a movie that has a slow build and has an interesting, you know, quirk on it. Um, and we have Starship Troopers, um, Serenity, one of my favorites, the movie made from the TV series, the short-lived TV series, uh, Firefly, and this was just a continuation uh, to, you know, kind of finalize everything or bring things to a closure. Or it's not really a closure because, I mean, you can go on, but... You know, it's a nice place to end. Um, here we go, Chronicles of Riddick. Um, more space flight. We have Supernova. Uh, right here, we have, I'm um, showing it, I mean, we have Critters and everything. And Chris Casey Jones picked Critters. Um, but I'm going to go with this one, Critters 4, because Critters 4 was actually done in space. Um, same thing with... When I go along here, no one picked any of these, but I'm just putting this one in there. <laughs> Leprechaun for In Space. Yeah, I mean, oh my god, this shit just gets so ridiculous. Uh, yeah, Red Planet, Trip to Mars, uh, 2001. I mean, I mentioned 2010 in my last one, but I had to go with 2001. Um, here we have Sunshine, uh, Danny Boyle film. God, you know what? Visually, this is just a gorgeous movie um just just beautiful and uh, you know i really enjoyed it uh, another one of my favorites the fifth element just a crazy whacked out story uh, luke Besson did a as far in my opinion did a uh, wonderful job and one of my favorite actors gary oldman just oh my god just classic the man can just do some amazing acting um star trek uh, this is the remake, the more up-to-date one. Um, I'm not a Trekkie, but I will say that this and uh, nods out to Alex and 80 Slasher. He showed, uh, was it Wrath of Khan, Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan? Um, I have to agree, and I told him, you know, that Star Trek II, the Wrath of Khan is actually one of my favorite um, Star Trek movies alongside this newer one. Um I like what they did with this, what J.J. Abrams did. Uh, oh, crap, I just realized I have actually Chronicles of Riddick in here twice. 
I didn't realize that. Oh, shit. All right. My bad. So here's what I'm going to do. Oh, we'll just correct that right now. And, uh, oh, here's one. Totally unexpected. No one would think I would do, I would go this angle and put this one in. Can anyone guess? Yeah. I don't need to describe crap about it. Yeah, I'm just going to show it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that finishes up my background. So there we have it. Um, oh, crud. I just realized something. I forgot something. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, just a movie that I wanted to show was my pick. I thought I grabbed it, but I didn't. So felt kind of stupid without it. Yeah, let's go back so I can incorporate more of the background. All right, there we go. Um, a movie from for space. I mean, this is a definite non-action movie, but oh my god, what a performance! Um, this actor really just blew me away, and that would be Sam Rockwell. In Moon. I mean, there's really nothing happening. It's, oh man. This is just a really very well done, beautifully filmed, and superbly acted movie. I mean, you know, they sit there and saying, uh, put movies out for Oscars and stuff like that. And when this came out, you know what, now that I can't remember. But Sam Rockwell, I don't know if he won anything for this. Um, but Jesus, the man needed to. I mean, he is the movie, literally. And just, you know, looking back on this, I can't think of anyone that I would have picked that would have fit this role better. Um, pretty much, he's by himself. The whole entire movie, it's him, uh, of the voice of the station that he's on, and sometimes some... I guess, appearances of other people through video that he watches. Other than that, the entire majority of the movie is him alone up on this lonely station waiting for a rotation, which is never going to come. Um, it's a sad, crazy-ass story. I mean, really interesting. I mean, as soon as you're watching it and certain things happen, you pretty much know um, what it's about. You know, there's nothing really hidden. I'm not. I'm not going to say anything. Give any more away because it's so easy to give this away to everyone. But uh, just intense. And I, this is one movie I highly recommend everyone should watch. That is, unless you know you don't like science fiction or whatever, or you don't like space movies, then don't watch it. But if you have any leaning towards a good story, or even a bit of science fiction or a tale with kind of just a messed up twist to it. You deserve to treat yourself to this movie, Moon. Excellent, very well done. I cannot highly recommend this anymore. Um, that uh, I guess I'm going to call that my Blu-ray pick for uh, the letter S in space. Oh yeah, shit. I forgot to mention, this is for the Alphabet of Awesome Movies. And the letter is S, and this week's word is space. <laughs> oh, forgive me. I'm I'm having a rough one. Um, enough of my woes. Uh, yeah, this was chosen by Selmer the God, who, uh, Paul, can't wait to see your return, man. Miss you, buddy. Um, anyways, uh, then I'll go with my DVD pick for space. Um. The comedy, Ice Pirates. Uh, God, I love this movie. Anytime I just need a little pick-me-up or something like that, I'll pop this one in just to laugh. Because it's just funny as shit. Well, shit can be funny sometimes, depending upon the context of how you find it. Especially when someone you don't like steps in a pile of it. <laughs> right in front of you. Yeah, and they get it all smushed over and they happen to be wearing flip-flops so it gets in your toes. I know a little gross visual there, but what the hell? Got to have some fun. And Ice Pirates is kind of like watching that happen to someone for me. So there you have it. Now, um, 
as usual, you know, I only have, what, four more left before I'm done, but that's my Bond picks. And I was thinking, well, what the hell is he going to pick for space when it comes to Bond? I mean, I have Moonraker, yeah, everybody knows Moonraker, but I've already chosen it for something. So, can't go there anymore. So, here we go with my last Bond pick for Sean Connery. That's right. Uh, I have three more picks after this, but this is the last Sean Connery Bond that I have. And the movie is Diamonds Are Forever. Um, what does this have to do with space? Well, Blofeld, right there, okay, which was um, originally played by Donald Pleasant. Um, Blofeld is James Bond's nemesis through um, a lot of the earlier Bonds. Now, he does get his comeuppance um, from Bond by Bond's hand. And, uh, oh, crud, now I can't remember which one it was. Alright, EJ, help me out. I know you're going to let me know. It's the one where he dropped. I just did it. Not too long ago, too. He drops him down the the smokestack. Oh, well. Anyways, moving on. And Diamonds Are Forever. Uh, James Bond is tracking down um, a vast amount, a large amount of missing diamonds that never got from South Africa to their buyers. Okay, they kind of, they went and disappeared. So they don't know what the diamonds are being used for. Well, Blofeld has kidnapped this multi-millionaire or billionaire um, who has power unimaginable. I mean, for someone that doesn't know shit, he just has money. This guy has power. He can get anything that he wants commissioned. Okay, he can have him build whatever the fuck he wants. Well, anyways... Uh, he's a recluse. Hasn't been seen for several years. So Blofeld, kidna Blofeld kidnaps him and takes his identity and has commissioned a satellite. Well, this satellite is actually nothing more than a gigantic laser that is powered by all these stolen diamonds. Okay, and they're flawless. All right. So he ends up having the satellite launched into space and is now destroying mili key military targets all over the world in hopes of causing so much chaos and panic that the world will bend to his will. That's what Blofeld has. So that is my connection to space. There is a satellite launched into outer space in orbit around the planet, destroying, or having, destroying and having the potential to destroy anything on the face of this planet. And James Bond has the task of stopping him. Um, so that's it. My background explained. Uh, my picks. My Blu-ray pick, which I've never really done before. Like three things this way. But, you know, what the heck. I don't know why I just decided to do it. Uh, we have Moon, Ice Pirates, and Diamonds Are Forever. Take care, everyone. Baton goes back to the originator. Dyslexic Nick. And rock on, everyone.